is this the actual bottom for Bitcoin, the real dip we've all been waiting for? Is it time to get up from the couch and buy today? In this video I will answer what I'm doing right now and why. And it's, as usual, different from how most people are reasoning. Which is a good thing, because statistically most people are wrong. It's when you find yourself on the side of the majority of investors that you should be worried. If you're a long-term follower, you might remember that I never put the laser eyes. In fact, I even tweeted stuff like this in February 2021, before we topped out there at 65k that time. Do the opposite of everyone else. Everyone puts laser eyes till 100k. Don't put laser eyes. Sell. Did 18th century Baron Rothschild say, the time to buy is when there's blood in the streets? Or did he say, the time to buy is when everyone on Twitter agrees that price can only go up? The correct answer is not B. This is called contrarian trading, and is that the right tool for today? I'm CTO Larson, let's find out. While it's debatable whether the Baron actually said the time to buy is when there's blood in the streets, even if the blood is your own. But as this great article points out, the stories are useful nonetheless as both offer excellent investing advice. The story goes that the Baron Rothschild was the first person in London to know of Wellington's victory in Waterloo in 1815, a good 200 years ago, and that he then used that insider information to speculate on stocks and make a fortune. Now causing the panic by offering up the wrong information to the public, which is what Nathan is said to have done, is not something one would be advised to do. However, you should be on the lookout for others doing it. People often spread fake stories in order to pump or dump a stock to spur on a bull run or a crash. What a great article. You who have spent time on crypto Twitter over the past years, does this sound familiar? Yes, it does. Most certainly does. Now in the Bitcoin markets, there is blood in the streets. And probably some of the blood is yours. So is it the time to buy? If you look at the fear and greed index, it's usually green in the uptrend and at the top, and it's most red at the bottoms. It isn't a bad idea to buy here actually. But for absolute clarity, the trend following process that I use has performed better, but it's a difficult process to execute emotionally. That's why I spend so much time in my course covering why it's likely to continue to work. You'll feel very stressed when it starts going up and you hold zero Bitcoin. You'll feel blinding FOMO and you might end up buying the pump. Then it retraces, you panic and sell again, then FOMO in again and so on and so forth. If you can't stick to the process. It feels hard to imagine now that we will ever feel FOMO when it feels like everything is going to zero. But I can guarantee you that that will happen at one point later on. And having some little position can help you combat that emotion. So before I continue, I need to make it absolutely clear. I do not suggest to take your whole investable portfolio and do a dollar cost average strategy down. No. The reason is that while it might work, your DCA hits and then it moons. What is more likely to happen is this. Either most of your bids never hit, then you end up sidelined when the market eventually reverses. Then most of your capital ends up being useless and you'll probably end up FOMOing back much later than an optimal entry. Or price smashes through all your buy levels and you end up having no capital left to buy when it's the actual bottom. This is the reason why my trend following process over time has performed better as you can probably verify yourself here. Right now it feels like we can predict some levels where Bitcoin will reverse. But if you back up just half a year and did the exercise then, when price broke out to all time high, you might have put three levels for example here at 57k, at 40k, if 
if we're really pessimistic, and maybe at 30k, to have room for the catastrophe scenario that we back up to the range bottom, which would have felt almost ridiculous at this point. Few would have put another level at 20k, and I don't think anyone would have put any levels at 12k, because at that time Bitcoin had never ever in the history of Bitcoin broken below the previous cycle top, which was at 20k. But now it has. So that illustrates that this is quite hard to do. But with those disclaimers, starting a dollar cost average down strategy here now isn't a bad idea at all. It's far, far, far better than buying the euphoria top like most people did. So if you for example are in that situation that you exited nicely at 49k when Larsen Line flipped blue, or you are new to the crypto markets and have been eyeing getting into Bitcoin market for some time, taking a minority part of your investable capital and deploying a dollar cost average down strategy is not ridiculous at all. If I wanted to make a bottom fishing dollar cost average strategy, I would do like this. I would take 30% of my capital allocated to Bitcoin and divide it in three lots of 10% each. Then I would deploy lot number one here today at about 20k. Say 10k USD, price 20k, we get 0.5 coins. For the second lot I'd look at where has volume been trading and we see then that it starts around here at around 12k. So we put the second lot at around 12k. Expect some front running, these are approximate numbers. So we get another 0.8 coins there. Then for the third lot, where could be the bottom? Here perhaps, or well, there was a lot of volume here at 5000, we would need to try to follow the dip where it happens, but say 3500, something like that. Then we get another 2.8 coins. We spent 30k dollars and we got 4.2 coins. Our average price is $7,000 per Bitcoin in that scenario. As you saw here, it's very important that we're not buying the same amount of Bitcoins. You're deploying the same dollar amounts, so we get more Bitcoins if the later lots hit. We're probably liquidating Michael Saylor. And remember, there aren't many Michael Saylors in the world. Michael took the biggest risk in the world. On Monday, Michael Saylor lost 6 billion, more money than any human being has ever lost in a single day. This article is from year 2000, 22 years ago. I'm not saying that to ridicule Michael, on the contrary. I respect the man immensely to come back so strong with the kind of the same game a second time. And my guess is that he will be successful this time. But if Bitcoin goes to like like 1 or 2 or 3k, he might be in real trouble. And there aren't that many Michael Saylors. And number two, we screw over the richest man in the world, who took a bold decision to buy Bitcoin on Tesla balance sheet. And number three, we liquidate the first brave country to trust us, El Salvador. And so on and so forth. If the market makers and shakers run price that bad, it will be hard to claim the narrative of world reserve currency the next time. Then instead it's a long way to recovery, if it ever happens. Remember, most altcoins only ever pump once. Perhaps that could happen to Bitcoin too, if the narrative truly fails. That's why I think it doesn't really make sense to put more buy lots much below 3 to 5k, like at 1 or 2k or something. Because then I'm not sure this will ever bounce back in the same way. Then maybe it's on to the next narrative with the next coin. Ethereum perhaps, where the narrative would obviously be environmentally friendly and blockchain applications not Bitcoin. Now to stop here for a moment, I'm not saying I think that this will happen. I'm just exploring one path of possibility to explore what buying actions would make sense should that path play out. If I had to guess, I would not guess that this would play out. If you were running the market, would you slaughter Sailor, Musk, El Salvador and then try to run the price back up again with the world reserve currency narrative? Perhaps not, right? It would seem a tad dumb, doesn't it? Perhaps smarter than to turn back around 20k and run it back up from here. 
But who knows, and we also have to respect that Bitcoin simply follows stock at this point, as I covered extensively in previous videos, which means that this might be out of control of anyone in the Bitcoin or crypto industry. So let's cut to the chase. Will I deploy this dollar cost averaging strategy here? No, I won't personally. Predicting the future of crypto markets has a ridiculously low percentage of success. So even if I do my best here, good chances are still that I will get it wrong. By a lot. If you've lived under a rock, you've seen how the celebrated Plan B's stock to flow model has now been completely slaughtered. And even Vitalik wrote this. Financial models that give people a false sense of certainty and predestination that number will go up are harmful. Yeah, that's what I've said all along. I actually tried hard to get plan B on the channel at the top late last year before the model had failed and my intention with the call was to tell him that he needs to readjust the model based on what actually happens. If you just look at this picture, it looks almost magical, right? It has worked so well. Yeah, but that's because it was created here in 2019 to fit the data backwards. It's just linear regression, which means that you fit the range on top of the data and then extrapolate it forward. But then when the market changes, you have to do it again. And he didn't do that. It's okay to not have the experience and that's why I wanted to help him. He should have taken my offer of help at the time. If you're listening plan B the offer still stands. Come on the channel and let's hash it out. And thanks for reading my tweets. Prediction is hard, especially the future. June 21, 3 p.m. Yeah, I wrote that an hour earlier. It's a joke my dad always used to make. And I think the properly phrased translation is. It's difficult to make predictions especially about the future. This has been attributed to many people, including Sam Goldwyn, Niels Bohr. It's very difficult to predict, especially the future. But actually it's a Danish proverb. The first written instance was dated 1948. And my dad spent a lot of time there. So with this in mind, what I've done instead is that I have a small part of my portfolio, and the key word here is small, that I have in Bitcoin and I just leave it there to zero if it goes there. It's okay, it's profits and that takes care of my own FOMO emotion. Then I can relax and try to deploy a more optimal strategy instead. So for the gamble entries on support, I cut them instead if support breaks. And I'll do the same here. If we're looking at the price action that happened here around 30k, this was manipulated in a very smart way. They ran price back and forth, back and forth through the 30k level, like 25 times, faking everyone in both directions. A ridiculous amount of times, while keeping price in this range of about 2k in either direction, then it finally broke down and I cut it. Now we're at 20k. If I switch this to linear, maybe you see it clear. Are we now going to play the same game again? Run it 2k above the line, get everyone to long, then reverse it to 2k below the line, get everyone to short, then run it back up again. Perhaps it worked last time, so why not try the same game again? And then, after some time, the real move. Then this becomes a rectangle. And as you recall, a rectangle can break out in either direction. If on the upside, it becomes becomes a powerful bottom pattern. And if on the downside, it becomes a flag. And then often the next move becomes similar in length to the previous move, which would take us here to about 12-13k on the log chart. I have tried a bottom fishing entry here around 20k. Same as I did around 30k. And same as I did then, if it doesn't hold, I will try to cut it. Rather than holding it down and try to buy more in a dollar cost average strategy. That doesn't always work. There is of course a risk that I get shaken out and then price moons without my position. But then I have two things. Number one, I have that small FOMO preventing hold position, so I'm okay. And, 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 price cannot move to 100k with large online down. It's mathematically not possible. So if we really do reverse here somewhere, at one point later there will be a gold flip on large online and then I will be buying big, even though everyone else, just as they had laser eyes on the top, will be laughing and saying, what are you doing? It's a clearly a dead cat bounce. 
And at that point, I will find myself once again with a minority, ridiculed by the masses, and I will feel good. So far this strategy has performed better than any of the other systems, and you saw how it saved us through the downturn so far, so I'm not going to start second guessing it now. But this is what I'm doing, you might be in a different situation, and that's why I can't give you advice, just educate and give you tools, because only you know your situation. Do watch out for impersonators guys, the only place you can get my course and indicator is on www.ctolarsson.com. Put in the effort, get own tools that you control, have a process. It is worth it guys if you want to take this seriously. And since Bitcoin has dropped 20,400, the price here of 0.1 BTC still gives you a slight discount over the dollar value. 2318, 2400. It should be 0.11 BTC already. I just haven't updated it. And once again, to help some of you who have had a tough drawdown, I leave the price for 24 hours before adjusting it up. If you haven't seen my video on position sizing from last week, definitely watch it here. It's been one of my most appreciated videos so far. Thank you all for the appreciation. Please like and subscribe if you found this useful. Thank you, Tuck. CTO Larson out. Hey,